before I go on, if you like this movie, this movie is bad, and I hope you feel bad. This is Mike Check 95 along with my cohort. Krieger Margin, I disagree with you, one. And we just got done watching one of the worst movies made by a high-profile movie company, Alien vs. Predator Requiem. Now, I am going to let you take the floor first so we can figure out if there's anything good in this film, and I can tell you if I agree or disagree. We are watching AVP Requiem. Um, it's a good little love story about an a anyways. Um, so the budget for this film is forty million dollars. <laughs> Do you think that they did well with this forty million dollar budget, Michael? It looks like they shot it with a handheld camera. Interesting. Well, I, I saw no evidence of that, but um, you want to know what? What do you mean you saw no evidence of that? <laughs> this was all shot by a handheld camera. <laughs> no. Yes. No. Yes. Listen. I bet you if I swap the lights around, that's how the movie would look. Mike, I think when I tell you how much money they made, it's going to make you angry. Yeah. Bomb. The budget was $40 million and they grossed $130.3 million. Uh, <laughs> According to Rotten Tomatoes, the gold standard of watching movies. No! Rotten Tomatoes is fucking rigged. The audience scored this a 1.2. And the critics scored this a 3.2. The critics scored higher than a 1. Because they thought it was well done. I'm going to go over my little factoids first, and then I'll talk about my different points. So, um, this movie actually came out in Christmas because they were trying to build off success of previous horror movies that came out at Christmas, giving the example of Scream. So, they actually had a slogan for this before it came out to the movies to try and a tagline if you will to get people to watch it the slogan is as follows this christmas there will be no peace on earth <laughs> thoughts continue also uh danny glover the guy from we haven't covered it yet but uh predator 2 um was and lethal, weapon. and lethal weapon i'm too old for this he declined because he was retired at this time. Okay, so this was actually interesting. Okay, so every one of these th these predators have a name. We kind of covered Scar was the one who got chest bursted and created the the thing. Pred alien. The pred alien. Um, pred alien's name is Chet, by the way. On set, they were trying to avoid spoiling, so they actually looked up. They they, they made up the most annoying name for the most annoying character they could ever make uh, make up, and it was from an old TV show. And there was this really obnoxious guy named Chet, so they nicknamed the Predalien Chet. The predator that is trying to clean up this mess, they is nicknamed Wolf, because of the of the guy who played um, uh, from Pulp Fiction. The actor's last name was Wolf, and he was the cleaner. He kind of cleaned up things. Fun little tidbit I noticed watching this film that I, I was surprised I actually saw due to the, the horrible lighting. Uh, Wolf, um, one of his four teeth, one of them was actually broken off. Yeah, and they actually they tried to make it show signs that, that he went through the blooding and he's killed aliens before um, and did the little tear off the mandible. So, so they, they did good on that, tr trying to keep the continuality. Unlike the previous film that was PG-13, this one was R-rated, which they said primarily they did that just because for a fan service because a lot of fans were yelling at them. Chet was actually inside of Scar's chest while Scar was being impaled in, PV in uh, Alien vs. Predator 1 uh, in the big final scene. The alien had already implanted itself inside of him and it was growing. So that's, that's interesting. This is also the only alien film in franchise history that had no eggs in it at all. This is also the shortest runtime of all of the alien franchise. No. No. No, it did not feel like that. And my eighth and final thing um, is that the guns were inaccurate in this film. Um, there was multiple times where the, the National Guard were shooting M4s, and M4s only have 30 round capacities, and they were shooting way more than 30s without reloading. How about the shot gun with the duct tape flashlight on it? That's realistic. It's a shitty cop that doesn't know what he's doing, so he probably doesn't even know how to use an attachment. I mean, at least we agree on that. That's the worst cop I've seen in any fucking movie ever. So I'm going to talk about what I like. I like the opening. The acid blood logic did so much better other than the stupid impalement of the guy's hands. <laughs> 
um, brutal the face hugger brutality was great. That was really good. Um, Alien and Predators all looked really good, except for Chet. I didn't really like Chet's look. Um, and then the Predator was really smart in, in the tunnels. Um, I really liked what he did there whenever he had the grid up. And then I was like, well, why is he calling? He's an idiot. And then he fucking pushed the... Yeah, that was pretty smart. And I want to applaud Wolf for being a real badass. Because like in the last movie, there was like six Predators getting their ass kicked. And they barely were able to fight him. But this guy like took on a whole army by himself. And he didn't win, but he didn't lose. Time to talk about some negative things here. There's a splash of blood that falls on the arm and it cauterized the wound and cut it off clean as if you're using a butcher cleaver. Didn't make any sense to me. The explosion, after he triggered the explosion of the of the ship, um, that kind of threw me off a little bit because it's a, it's an implosion, but it didn't it didn't look like an implosion of like a gigantic area and the timing on the on the countdown thing it was like one second he was in there then suddenly he was running away just enough not to be imploded which the range of it was way more in the last movie so this must be a weaker ship or something dialogue was bad but this is early 2000s the face hugger time also did make sense at some points at some points the, I, I feel like the plot um d caused their evolution not necessarily actual biological factors before prometheus and alien covenant came out the, it was at this point to where the fucking producers and directors just kept speeding up the face hugger to xenomorph morph process and the growing uh the growth time span to the point to where it just didn't make any fucking sense anymore it's like you would flip a coin and oh look they're gonna grow in six seconds like it takes away from the scary when they're not yeah. slowly evolving. Also, another thing, um, after the, the dog brings in the hand to the great police officer that we have, um, he, he says, oh, I'm going to have to take you in, homeless guy. And then next thing you know, you see the homeless guy go back into the cave with all of the other homeless people. The cop is extremely bad, like one of the worst logical thinking cop. It's like every time that it was time to make a decision, he's like, I'm either A, going to make a bad decision, or two, I'm just going to say, I don't know, and I'm going to go find some random person and inform them what's going on. <laughs> the hoe was bad. The hoe got killed anyway, so that, that part was good. Um, the cringy romance high school, oh, I'm a nerd, I like you, and you're dating a bully, and but you realize the bully's an asshole, so you're going to date the nice guy, but then you're really just using... That, sh that whole stupid shit pisses me off. This pissed me off. The guy literally got impaled by, by, the, by the alien tail and... And then they don't, they sit him up and go, like, you're going to be okay. Let's go. And then they keep going. And I don't see him leaking blood anywhere or, like, that shit fucks you up. Apparently not this nerd. He's a fucking god because he wore his goddamn hat. Overall is this film. I felt like the early on it was good. Middle it was okay. And then from pretty much the swimming pool on it got worse. So, I mean... This film was going to be like an 8 for me if it finished well. But it didn't. <laughs> Choose your words wisely. So, um, I'm, I'm giving this a 6. At, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, the lighting and directing is really bad part of it. But I do like the storytelling, the continuality that they did from AVP. I'm taking into account that this is early 2000s and the last one had development hell and this one didn't have as bad as development hell but it still had a lot of issues um so i'm going to leave mike to go rage now so for one i say it's inconsistent is because the other film is set in 2004 it's in a dialogue piece which i'm not going to rewind and watch it again they say something about like isn't halloween like fucking like three six months from now and that's like, well, wait a second. How does that make sense when the date was set on this movie and then it's saying, it's like, oh, hey, it's like in 12 months later from Halloween. So what you're telling me is from the time span of poor old Scar getting chest bursted, the ship crashing, going back to the Colorado woods took eight months when it's supposed to be set right after the events of the first film? That doesn't make any fucking sense. At all. Listen, how, how does that make sense? How? It does. Listen, Mike. 
Space doesn't go that fast it goes, when it's like right outside the Earth. It goes slow though. That's why eight months passes. I don't see that doesn't make any sense. I don't see where it's in eight months. Cause you, cause you weren't listening to the dialogue. <laughs> You're on your phone most of the time. Yep. My biggest issue with this movie is very well known. This film has. The most worst lighting I've seen. Most worst? In any movie. Because you can't see shit anywhere. And there's some cool shit that Predator does. But all you see is maybe an outline of the Predator. And you almost don't know what the fuck he's doing. I would say, I would say the fight scenes would be really cool if I could see what was going on. It's hard to say anything good about this movie. When you can't see shit. And none of it just doesn't make any sense to me. I... Let's try and exercise, Mike. Try and say good things about this film. Wolf wasn't stupid. You just couldn't see him. The military dad, wife, father, husband, dude, got murdered funny. No monster. <laughs> oh, the end. Who was that person at the end? That, that was to be like a I don't know. I couldn't see her fucking face. Who was she supposed to be? Yutani. Is that is she from the first one? I don't know. Waylon Yutani is the company that joined together because money. But I don't know who the fuck Yutani is. Maybe some viewers who like read the comics know who Yutani is or know the Alien verse. These two movies retcon everything. It doesn't make any fucking sense. I am done talking about this film. This film. Gets a point five out of ten. It gets a point five because the predator actually looked like he knew what the fuck he was doing, but everything else is so fucking bad. The reason why I'm making a huge fucking deal about how horrid this movie is is that yes, it's well documented that Godzilla is a bad movie, but it's boring. That Thanks Killing is a bad movie, but it's made by literally high school kids. That Lamageddon is probably the worst film I've seen known to date that makes Thanks Killing look like a piece of art. But this film was not made by a low budget company, was not made by high school kids. Fucking high profile filming company made this movie. Then why does it look like a fucking YouTube movie done by a sixth grader? Wait, so you rated an eight? Is that what I heard? A point five. Out of ten. This can't be that bad. A high profile filming company filmed this and okayed it and it looks like a sixth grader from YouTube made it. Are you trying to tell me that this is just as bad as Blair Witch Project? Yes. Is it worse? Yes. <gasps> this Hi, is everyone. This has been AVPR. Join us next time when we watch One of the greatest horror films of all time. Fuck this movie.